This is Barry Zelma, Zelma on Insurance. I am an attorney who has retired from the practice of law and now spend my time as an insurance claims consultant, an expert witness, an author and producer of these videos. Today I'd like to speak about the equitable remedy of salvage as it relates to an insurance claim. The term salvage simply means used or damaged property that retains an asset value. It does not connote equipment that was valueless or incapable of use. Historically, courts have applied the maritime law of salvage when ships or their cargo have been recovered from the bottom of the sea by those other than their owners. Under this law, the original owners still retain their ownership interests in such property, although the salvors are entitled to a very liberal salvage award. Such awards often exceed the value of the services rendered, and if no owner should come forward to claim the property, the salvor is normally awarded its total value. Salvage is another equitable remedy, like subrogation, that the insurance claims person should never ignore. An insurer that pays for a loss is entitled, in equity, to receive the salvage for which it has paid. If the debris is left to the insured to sell, he or she will receive more than the indemnity bargained for when the policy of insurance was obtained. In essence, by paying a claim, the insurer is essentially buying the salvage. The insurance claims professional, the adjuster, should always protect the possible salvage and be sure a salvor is standing by to take possession. By taking salvage, the adjuster helps to reduce the total amount of the loss paid without reducing the indemnity the insured receives. The insurer has a right to salvage proceeds when the insured incurs a loss greater than the policy limits. However, most first-party property policies today do not refer to the term salvage. Modern policies make an attempt to deal with salvage with provisions like the recovered property condition in Homeowners Form HO00030491 that provides, quote, if you or we recover any property for which we have made payment under the policy, you or we will notify the other of the recovery. At your option, the property will be returned to or retained by you, or it will become our property. If the recovered property is returned or retained by you, the loss payment will be adjusted based on the amount you receive from the recovered property. Close quote. Many years ago, a bicycle owned by my and used by my son was stolen from our garage. My insurer paid its full replacement value in accordance with the terms and conditions of their policy. Then they recovered the bicycle and wanted to give it back to me, which I'd already replaced with the full replacement cost they'd paid me, and asked that I pay back what they paid. I refused. The salvage value went to the insurer, and there was no obligation on the part of the insured to buy it back, since its value as salvage was much less than the amount paid. Ultimate net loss in many insurance policies is defined as all sums actually paid or which an insured is legally obligated to pay as damages in settlement or satisfaction of claims or suits for which insurance is afforded by a policy 
after deductions of all recoveries of salvage. Some policies attempt to cover the right of salvage by making it an option of the insurer to take all or part of the property at the agreed value. Only inland marine policies contain sue and labor clauses that require the insured to work to protect the property against loss. A typical sue and labor clause provides, quote, in case of any loss or damage of any kind whatsoever, it shall be lawful and necessary for the assured or his or their factors, servants, or assigns to sue, labor, and travel for in and about the defense, safeguard, and recovery of the aforesaid subject matter of this insurance or any part thereof without prejudice to this insurance or waiver of the assured's rights hereunder. Close quote. The Lloyd's form O parentheses L close parentheses its jeweler's block policy. An insurance policy providing collision coverage is unambiguous and allowed the insurer to require the insured to give the insurer the salvage automobile before paying actual cash value when the automobile had been classified as a total loss. These clauses place a burden on the insured to use all efforts to protect the property from further loss. They do not deal with lawsuits. The insured must work to recover damaged property that still has value so that the total amount of the loss may be reduced by the value of the recovered property. There is also a doctrine known as equitable salvage, and in reaching conclusions about the equitable doctrine of salvage, I have looked for similar precedent on the similar equitable doctrine of subrogation that is also covered in my book Zelma on Insurance Claims, Part 107, Second Edition. Equitable subrogation is stated as, quote, He who through no fault of his own is caused to pay the debt of another is entitled to all the rights of the person whose debt he paid, close quote. The U.S. Supreme Court explained that it is a general rule that fraud or any gross misconduct on the part of the salvors in connection with the property saved will work a forfeiture of the salvage, and the evidence with reference to the means employed to obtain a levy on the bonds in question and the sale thereof fully justifies a court in the conclusion which it reached that no allowance ought to be made by way of equitable salvage for the monies advanced to the insured to obtain the return of the bonds to the company, similarly to encourage seamen to render prompt service in future emergencies. This was the decision of the Supreme Court of the United States and Richardson's Executor v. Green, an 1890 decision, and Flagship Marine Services v. Belcher Towing, a 1991 decision of the Southern District of Florida. The formal elements of a valid salvage claim under general maritime law are, one, there must be a marine peril placing the property at risk of loss, destruction, or deterioration. Two, the salvage service must be voluntarily rendered and not required by an existing duty or special contract. And three, the salvage efforts must be successful in whole or in part. Where the vessel was undeniably subject to a marine peril, in that it was sinking prior to the services rendered by Port Royal and C.J. Seafood, 
If the plaintiffs had no pre-existing duty to pump, haul, or repair the boat in trouble, the services were successful if it did not sink, and the plaintiffs are entitled to a salvage award since they saved the vessel. This is uh, Royal Seafood versus Byrne, a 2009 decision. Equity establishes who can recover the proceeds of the sale of salvage after a fire. Equity, fairness, a doctrine of law that looks to what is fair to the parties involved. Equity does not deal with money judgments. To get a judgment from a court of equity, the plaintiff must first prove that no adequate or speedy remedy at law exists. If money damages will solve the problem, a court of equity will never interfere. Equitable salvage, therefore, is defined as, quote, the term salvage is sometimes also used in cases in which property has been preserved from loss by the last of several advances by different persons. In such a case, the person making the last advance is frequently entitled priority over the others on the ground that, without his advance, the property would have been lost altogether. This right, which is sometimes called equitable salvage and is in the nature of a lien, is chiefly of importance with reference to payments made to prevent leases or policies of insurance from being forfeited or to prevent mines and similar undertakings from being stopped or injured. Salvage loss is that kind of loss which is presumed would but for certain services rendered and exertions made have become a total loss. In the language of marine underwriters, this term means the difference between the amount of salvage after deducting the charges and the original value of the property insured. Close quote. Black's Law Dictionary, revised 4th edition, published in 1968 by West Publishing Company. In the insurance context, Salvage is an equitable right of the person who provides indemnity, the insurer, and the insurer may recover whatever is possible from the property that was damaged and paid for in the claim. One case involved a dispute among three groups of divers for the right to salvage silver from the cargo of a ship sunk and for the title to whatever silver is recovered. The dispute was over who had priority to the rights of the salvage. In resolving the problem, the court considered the common law of fines that treats property that is abandoned as returned to the state of nature and thus equivalent to property such as fish or ocean plants with no prior owner. The first person to reduce such property to possession, either actual or constructive, becomes its owner. A mere searcher has no rights in abandoned property, even if he succeeds in locating it. In particular, he has no right to exclude others from the attempt to recover it. Any competing searcher is entitled to enter the area where the abandoned property is and to seek to reduce it to his possession, as long as he or she acts without infringing on the concurrent rights of other searchers. In the 1861 decision of Eads v. Brazelton, had Brazelton placed his boat over the wreck with means to raise its values, and had he persisted in efforts directed to raising the lead, his conduct would have constituted the only effectual guard over it, 
and thus a judicially recognizable warning that the long-time occupants would have been obliged to regard. In Treasure Salvage litigation, Treasure Salvors, the group responsible for finding the treasure, was awarded Title II and an exclusive right to recover the entire cargo, which was scattered over a wide area by the Southern District of Florida in a 1981 decision and by the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal in a 1999 decision. The facts of the case, however, readily justified a ruling for TSI under the law of fines. TSI had not only the intent to re acquire the entire cargo, but the proven capacity to do so. More important, TSI had recovered a large part of the cargo and had placed the rest within its possession to the extent consistent with the nature of the cargo, and TSI was engaged in a systematic, unrelenting work to recover all the remaining cargo from the entire area over which it was scattered. Salvage law requires that to be a salver, a party must have the intention and capacity to save the property involved, but the party need not have the intention to acquire it. In the salvage content, only the right to compensation for services, not the right to title, usually results. Possession is therefore more readily found than under the law of fines. Success is essential to obtain a salvage award. Even a would-be salvor who does not himself save the property involved will be paid for any service rendered that helps another salvor preserve the property. This video was adapted from my book, Zelma on Insurance Claims, Part 107, Second Edition which is available as both a Kindle book and as a paperback from Amazon.com as one of the ten parts of the work Zalma on insurance claims. If you found this video to be useful to you, please refer it to your colleagues. And please also subscribe to my YouTube channel, my Rumble channel, my blog so that you can be advised of future videos, future blog postings, and future information about insurance claims and insurance law. Thank you for your attention.